Hey DIYers, welcome to a new series I'm pretty excited about. It is it is as yet untitled, but that is because it just kind of fell into my lap. To this point, most of the videos that I've been planning are pretty basic and we're going to work our way up to the extra level stuff. So what we're going to do with this series is it's going to be a little bit higher level stuff. We're not going to be doing super advanced, but it's it's going to hopefully touch on stuff that not a lot of people have worked with yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to build an API in Node with a Mongo backend for data. And then we're going to connect to that Node server with a mobile app. And I'm thinking we might throw Socket.io in there just for fun, just to have live connection when they're in the app. That's total overkill, but hey, it's a learning opportunity. So we're going to dive right in as quickly as we can. The basic premise of the app is... Basically a place for this guy to drop tasks for his people, his employees. It's not it's not a task manager, it's just letting them know what's coming up, what they have today, what they have tomorrow, and what they have come in the coming weeks. So they just know when to schedule stuff, when not to schedule stuff, and he's the same way, so he has that record. Again, this app probably exists, but it's a great teaching opportunity in my opinion, so I'm going to go ahead and do it this way. So we're going to take this from beginning to end. I'm not going to do any planning. I'm going to totally off the cuff it, which is going to get ugly, I'm sure. But I think it'll be good for me, for you, and as a good learning experience. So let's go ahead and open up your terminal. If you don't know where it is, you go into Applications, then Utilities, and it's right there. So let's make sure you have Node installed. So let's do Node dash dash version. And that'll give you your version. I'm on 10.3.2, or no, 10.32. <clears throat> and let's also check NPM. Make sure you have that. And I'm on 1.4. If you don't have it, let's go to node.js. And that's weird. Click install. And it'll download a file, install it, restart your browser, and you're ready to roll. We're not going to do a whole lot of coding here today. So you're going to navigate to your desktop via your terminal. I have a shortcut set up. So let's say I didn't have that. Um, you would do forward slash. If you're on a Mac, it's... Um, I think you just do forward slash. Oh, no. You'll do CD desktop, I believe. Yeah. So now you see all the files on my desktop. So we're going to do make dir, which is going to make a directory. And we're going to call it uh, tasker. So now you should see Tasker on that list right there. Oops, right there. So let's go ahead and go into Tasker. And that folder is empty, but we're gonna open it with Sublime. Um, you can also just open it on your desktop and drag it onto the Sublime icon down here. So let's go ahead and set this up. So we have a, an empty folder here now, which is fine. So how are we going to build this? Well, there's not going to be an HTML front end, so we don't need to worry about HTML or anything like that. So it's pretty much just going to be JavaScript. It's going to be the node server and the controllers and models that are behind it. So let's go ahead and create a new folder called models. Let's create a new folder called controllers. And then we're going to create two files. We're going to create one new file called um, we'll save it. We'll call it server.js. Nothing big there. And we're going to another new file. We'll save it. We'll call it package. Oops. Package.json. So we have this package.json file. You know, I was going to take you guys through writing it out, but realistically, I mean, that's what your terminal is there for. So let's just go ahead and do npm init which will take you through a prompt. So the name is Tasker, that's fine. It's version 1.0. Description, we'll call it um, Simple Task Manager Viewer. Entry point server.js, which we already created, that's fine. Test command, we're not worried about that. The Git repository, we will update eventually. Keywords, not worried about that. Author, we'll set up Tech Guy DIY. License, I don't know what I want to do about license, uh, whatever common is, I can't think of the name of it, it's fine, I'm just going to leave it alone right now. 
Okay, this is okay. Yes, this is okay. So now what you'll see is if you go to J if you go to your package.json, which you would have created on its own. So now you have um, no test. You are start to start. You're doing node server. Um, main is server.js. Everything looks good. So now, now we can start looking at what do we want to install to help support this. So the one I know for sure um, is going to be npm install. So we're going to do install express. So let's, if you do the dash dash save, when you hit enter, it'll install it in a, as you'll, you'll see a folder pop up called node modules. It'll install it there, but what it also does is, if you look here, it added a dependency here. So now, when you're working in a team, and you're working with Node or NPM, you don't ever want to sync your modules. So when you're using a Git repository, you want to ignore the Node modules, because there is nothing that that is going to do to help you long term when you're working on a team. Because really, it's best for your teammates to install it on their own system, just because there's a lot of little things that can break and you'll never be able to trace it down if you don't do it this way. So what you want to do is you want to get ignore your node modules folder and always do dash dash save when you're npm installing something. That will install it and will add it as a dependency. So when you push this up to your git repository, your teammate pulls it down, all they have to do is type npm install. It'll look at all these this list of dependencies here, and it'll go through and install it for that person. So they don't have to go through and manually do what you're about to do if you set it up correctly. So the other thing we're going to do um, is socket.io, which I believe is npm install socket, socket.io, dash dash save. So that'll read through a few things here. And again, it's a bit of overkill, it really is, but you know what, it's it's a fun learning opportunity and, and that makes me, you know, I like playing with Socket.io quite a bit. Uh, then the last thing we're probably going to do, do I want to do that? You know, I'm thinking about actually making it secure with like an OAuth 2 server. Hmm. I'm going to skip that for now. I may come back to that in future episodes, but... The one other thing we might as well go ahead and do, we're not going to do anything with it yet, but we're going to uh, npm install mongoose because we will use that to type to tie into Mongo database. Oh, see? So now see what you're going to see happen here is it's going to install it. I forgot to dash dash save. I just broke my own rule. So it's going to go through and do a few things. So now it's saved to the node modules. So now you have mongoose here, but it isn't here. So if you didn't, if you get ignored, your node modules, they would not show up when if somebody just typed npm install. It would only install what's in your dependencies here. So I'm going to go ahead and actually reinstall that again with dash dash shave. So it shouldn't actually do anything. It'll just add it to my file, which is perfect. Done. Uh... Hello. There it is. Okay. Did I see it already? And I just wasn't paying attention. All right. So now you have Mongoose, you have Express, you have Socket.io. I think, you know what? We're also going to need cores. So what cores is, is basically it allows your API to be called from different servers. So typically, you don't allow data to be pulled from your server by another server because they could just be scraping your website or taking data or a bunch of other malicious things. So you just don't allow that to happen. So what you'll do is when you got an API, you have to open that up and you need to basically say they're allowed to connect to the server to get data. Now, we'll, lo we'll probably end up locking that down with some kind of a key system, whether it's OAuth 2 or not, I don't know, but there will be some aspect to it that will require you to log in or have a key to, for, to be able to connect to that data. It's not just going to be open to the public. But let's go ahead and do npm install course so it's installed and it's ready to roll. Um, I can't. Ah, oh, I did it again. I am breaking my own rule way too much today. 
So, I mean, I feel like, okay, we got cores now. We got cores installed here. This is all we're going to do in the package.json. So, let's jump over to server.js. So, let's go ahead and um, bring in our express module. Express is equal to require express. So, what this is going to do is it's going to reach into the node modules folder and grab the express module. So, then we're going to do var app is equal to express which will basically bring in all the exp express object into the app. So then we'll do app.get. So we're going to set up a basic route here, and we'll get more complicated routes eventually, but um, in this episode we're just going to do a simple route. Uh, we're going to do function response. Uh, it's request response, I believe. Request response. And we're going to do that. I'm going to close off our thing there. Next, we need to invoke our server, so we're going to do server dot, or no, I'm sorry, var server is equal to app dot listen for 3000. Throw, invoke a function. We'll close that off. And then I think we're going to do, so we need to get our host. Is equal to var host is equal to server dot address dot address and then we'll do our port port is equal to server dot address dot port and we're going to do console dot log server is listening at uh, oops. Percent S on port percent S. And then we're going to do comma host comma port. So what this will do is when we launch the server here, which we will do in a sec, it will set up express it'll set up a route for express so when we go to the home page which is the root it'll say it should respond with the hello world and then what it's actually doing here is it's actually starting the server setting it up to listen on port 3000 and we're getting the host and the port and this is just kind of a visual thing to show you that where it's listening it's mostly visual and it helps for you know making sure you know exactly where it's at it's really not a big deal. You could just as easily put, you could just as easily do this, and that would work too. But just for the sake of showing you how everything works, let's go ahead and do node server.js. So now it's listening on our local host at port 3000. So let's open up our Chrome here. We're going to go to local host 3000. Hello world. So we have our server set up and configured for the most part. So now in the next episode, we're going to dive into actually building up our API, building all our routes, and thinking through what kind of data we're going to need. Thank you, DIYers, for watching. Take care.